Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to bind your quilt 100% by machine. And when you're finished, you will not be able to tell that you did any of it by machine. In fact, it's going to look just like you hand sewed it. Basically, I'm going to show you how to hand sew binding on by machine. So let's get started. One of the questions I get asked a lot is which batting I prefer. And I really love the bamboo batting because it has this quality to it where it stretches at the same rate as the material. In essence, it has memory built into it, just as your fabrics do, that allow them to stretch out and come back to their flat state. Therefore, you don't have to worry about the bamboo batting tearing inside of your quilt. You know that it will have a nice sustainability quality to it, unlike some negative experiences I've had with cotton and wool. But you could also use the polyester battings as they are very sustainable. We're not sure how long they'll last, maybe longer than we will. Before I sew my binding on, I always make sure that the back and the batting and the top are going to line up properly and not shift at all while sewing. You can accomplish this two ways. You can use our liquid-based basting glue and put a line of glue underneath the top and the bottom of your quilt, or you can sew a stitching line along the edge of the top of the quilt like an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the top, and that will really hold it nicely. So that's what I'm gonna do now. This foot adjusts for me to help me sew a perfect seam allowance or guide an exact distance away from the edge of the material. If you don't have this foot, uh, this edge stitching that we're doing right now. So down to the corner. Lower the needle and continue all the way around the quilt. Now I've come around, I just go back a little bit over where my stitching is, and now we're going to cut the quilt all the way around right up along the edge of the top because we planned beforehand that the back of the quilt extend out past the top. There's no chance that we didn't stitch on the back of the quilt with that little stitching line, so it will be held perfectly in place while we go ahead and sew the binding on. Make sure your rotary cutter blade is off the side of the ruler and then push down against the ruler. As I progress up, I slide my hand up and push down again. And before moving the ruler, you check to make sure that your cut is clean. If not, you have a chance to cut before you continue. Repeat that on all four sides. See how accurate that stitching line is? But we didn't have to struggle to keep our needle against the edge of that because we did it before cutting. Next, we're gonna be cutting our binding strips. And I was tempted to use the jelly roll that I used to create this top. However, they cut these strips on the straight so there's no give on the material. And we need that little bit of stretch to help us get around the corners nicely. So I had to choose an alternate fabric. There's a lot of opinions on cutting binding and which direction to cut it. Sometimes people use the bias. When you purchase your material and it has a fold on one side, if you cut across this direction, you will have the proper stretch in the material. And you can see here, so. This is how much it will stretch. So it has a good amount of stretch, but not too much. We don't want too much stretch because that can make our binding wear out prematurely on our quilt. To make sure that we have accurate cuts, we want to extend out past one line so that we know we're going to get a clean cut all the way across and make sure the bottom of the material where I folded it also lines up all the way across with the line. Then make sure that you keep your ruler lined up with the line on the bottom and above. And we want to be careful slowly so that we don't have our hand suddenly shift. Keep your concentration, take your time. Cutting is important. And then as before, always leave the ruler in place, pull your strip away to make sure that it cut cleanly. I'm going to come over to the two and a half inch mark on the cutting board. 
you want to make sure that your quilt binding is four times the perimeter of your quilt plus about 12 to 14 inches of fabric for where we're going to join the two ends of the binding together. Now we're going to go ahead and sew these bindings together to create a longer piece with no visible sign of a seam allowance. This fabric's really hard to tell the, the right side and wrong side from, but if you don't iron before you start sewing these, you'll be able to tell which side is right because the fold where the fabric was folded in half points to the right side. So now we know that this is right side right here. You just bring them together like this. And if you want to ensure that there's no chance of the material slipping place, a little bit of our glue, you don't even have to do a lot, just a little bit. And this will keep it from shifting on you as you're sewing. Should you have any challenges that prevent you from easily holding your material. You want to make sure that this point lines up and that the edge of the materials both line up with each other down here and up here. Use a ruler and a pen and draw a line from this point here to the other point. Then you don't have to worry about your seam allowance not being straight. If you sew down and you kind of curve in the middle, it will distort the the most important part of the binding, which is the fold in the middle that we're going to make shortly. And draw across. I like to use a short stitch length on this, about a 1.8 millimeter, or slightly more than 12 stitches per inch. Yeah, nice and straight we sewed, and now we don't have to worry about it not being perfect. Then you go ahead and flip it open and press. You can either cut one quarter inch away from the stitching line or separate the fabric from the glue and then press them apart. I find this works really nice Instead of a quarter, cutting a quarter of an inch away, when you go to sew the binding in, it's, it's a very gradual movement on the feed dogs instead of a sudden quarter inch bump. By securing the materials to one another, there's no chance on it shifting while we're sewing either. Draw a line of glue and then you just slide your finger across and then just brush very lightly like you're brushing salt off a table. And now there's no sign of your seam allowance on the top. For me, it's all about accuracy on quilting, especially when it comes to the binding. So to prevent my fabrics from shifting in this manner, so sometimes we, we iron our fabrics down and we sew our binding on, but sometimes we don't catch the back binding and that's because they can shift on you if they're not connected to one another. Use our basting glue again and just draw a line right along the edge of one side and fold it over and take your time to make sure that you're absolutely perfect on both sides of the binding. And do that the entire length of your binding and you'll have complete confidence that that binding will not separate or shift on you while you're sewing. Once you're done glue basting all of your binding down, then use spray starch and spray a liberal amount of spray starch onto the fabric. Make sure your iron is not set for steam and then go ahead and press and I do a little wiggle like that as I go across to keep it from getting too hot in one spot. And We also don't want to move the iron up and down because the fabric does have a little stretch to it. But what we're actually doing by using spray starch is kind of locking the bias temporarily so that it doesn't stretch when we go to sew it onto our quilt. The extra body that you get from using spray starch is, is very instrumental in making sure there's no puckers on your binding. It adds a really nice body. And know that the liquid-based glue is really just water-soluble stabilizer. And the spray starch will also just disappear over time as neither one are permanent but both serve you well for making perfect binding. What you see here is what's called washi tape. 
and it's pretty much similar to painter's tape but it comes in a lot of different colors and different widths and I really like this narrow quarter inch width. I like the fact also that it has different colors so that you can contrast your color of your material against the color of the tape. To be very accurate with this we just with no presser foot on bring the needle down so that it hovers over one of the lines on the measuring tape and go ahead and apply the washi tape right over that quarter inch mark and we're really trying to just make sure there's tape on this side you don't need it all the way across so you just rub it down and then hold your finger there and tear it off and now you know that you have a perfect guide for doing your mitered corners now to select a quarter inch seam allowance with the satin edge foot or you can put your quarter inch foot on your machine lower the needle lower the foot and move the wire over to the quarter inch mark before beginning to apply our binding i always like to put a clip on both ends of a nine inch gap so i know not to stitch in that area because that's where we'll join the two ends of the binding together and then you can go ahead and make sure that the end of your binding it goes at least nine inches past that first clip and we're going to go ahead and start sewing our quarter inch seam allowance you want to make sure that you push toward the foot so that it pushes back the other way and keeps you perfectly accurate on that quarter inch seam allowance away from the edge of the quilt Keep your binding lined up on top of the material and take your time. There's no hurry. It's about accuracy in quilting. Slowly working your way down the quilt, making sure that you don't lose track and have the quilt slide like that. You only want to make sure that it's pushed up against the foot so that we don't have to worry about being accurate. And as we approach a corner, this is what you want to start looking for your washi tape. And I currently have a two and a half millimeter stitch length. I will be reducing it after we reach the tape. We're looking on the top edge of the washi tape. So now you can see that there's a gap there and we just bring the fabric back so that when we bring our needle down that we're right on the edge of that tape. Then you lift the foot and swing it around and we're going to come diagonally towards the point on the corner of the quilt. But before doing so, you're going to shorten your stitch length down to about 1.8 and stitch off that point. Now you can see that diagonal line We'll ensure that we have a nice miter on the back of our quilt. And then you take and pull your fabric like this. And what you're wanting is the fold to be lined up with the quilt there and on this side. And I highly recommend taking your time on this because it's all about making a perfect binding. And I press, this serves you later. If you do a really tight crease on this, you're going to have an easy time on the other side of the quilt. Now, when starting on a bulky material like this, where you can see the foot starts to tip down, I like to start on the quilt, not off the edge. And so, a couple stitches forward and then reverse, go back, and then come back up. And it doesn't get stuck on you. Now, proceed and make sure you continue to push toward the foot so that it guides for you, keeping your binding right along the edge. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same thing on all four sides of the quilt. Remember to increase your stitch length it's back to two and a half on the straights so it doesn't take as long. But it really doesn't matter. You'll just have a hard time if you ever wanna rip the binding off. If you use such a short stitch length, Thank you. 
One more time, looking for the washi tape. Once you see that you're lined up with it, you make sure that your fabric doesn't go forward as you lower the needle. Lift, rotate the material. Aim for the corner after shortening your stitch length. And if you didn't shorten your stitch length, going back and forth will help make sure that it's a nice stitch. So you kind of pinch the fabric and then bring it around so that the fold lines up right along the edge of that. Then once again, you want to press that so it's really crisp. Starting on, so a couple stitches back up. Increase your stitch length. And line up your edges and keep sewing. the last corner as before come down until you see the edge of the washi tape lower your needle and if while doing that there's a separation between the tape and the fabric's edge bring it back lower the needle lift swing around head towards that point and say you forgot to use a shorter stitch length Now's your chance to switch to a shorter stitch length and use your reverse button and go back up until you reach that seam allowance point. You do not want to have a really long stitch length on those miters. You go ahead and just hold that down, spin it around, and see how that nicely just brings that fold right over. Now as we come around, we are reminded of where to stop our sewing by the clip that I placed before I began. Now I just remove the clip and keep my finger positioned there so I don't forget to stop again. thread and now we're ready for the part that a lot of people get confused by. I'm going to help alleviate some of your worry. Having all this extra binding in your way can be overwhelming. So what we want to do is first alleviate some of the bulk of the excess binding that we have and we're going to cut some off but to make sure that we're not cutting off too much you go ahead and fold it back like this. Remember, you need about nine inches of overlap to work with. So think about that when you decide which side to take more off of. And we just go ahead and press that fold and take the other side and bring it up to that point. Go ahead and bring that binding over and press again. So what we have here is where the two bindings will ultimately meet so we know that if we cut a distance away from this side and a distance away from that side, while still allowing enough seam allowance area, that we're pretty much safe at cutting all this excess binding away. In fact, the amount the bindings will overlap is identical to when we overlapped our binding to join them together. It is going to be exactly the width of the binding that you cut. So if you cut a two and a half inch binding, you want to make sure that the two bindings are going to overlap 
two and a half inches. So go ahead and cut some of that excess away. Now that you know you have plenty of excess binding to go beyond where the two bindings will join together, we're going to go ahead and cut them to the exact size we need in order to know that our binding will be nice and flat up against the quilt. You're going to find that it's, it's not easy to tell where that edge is once you lay the other piece over the top of it. So to help you to see it, just use a pen and mark right where the binding's edge is on the actual quilt. And this is a pen that just irons away. Then you go ahead and you take the other side of the binding and lay it right over the top of that one. So you just take your measuring tape and come out two and a half inches and mark your binding. And now you know that you need to cut off that amount. And I'm all about accuracy in, in quilting, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a ruler to make sure that I draw a nice straight line. And then you cut. Now you can see that these two pieces are able to overlap that two and a half inch. And even though these fabrics were glued together, you can pull them apart. Pull both sides of the binding open. A much easier way of getting your bindings to lay down accurately is to use the basting glue right along this edge. Slide your finger across to evenly distribute it. Before opening up the second piece of binding, lay it down so that it lines up up at the top of the, the binding below it. And then down at the bottom. So now instead of instead of spreading the fabric apart, which makes it harder to handle, you can let that just dry like that and you know that that is exactly the position that that binding needs to be in. Once it's dried, then you can open it up and continue to glue this little section right up here. Now that we've glued these fabrics together and they are held together so well, you can lay out the two pieces perfectly flat. Make sure you're lined up with the corner up here and the corner at the bottom, and then go ahead and draw a line all the way down using a ruler. Some people eyeball this, but if you don't sew perfectly straight as you're going down from one corner to the other, if you veer a little bit in the middle, you'll end up with your binding having an odd shape on the other side. You may feel it shouldn't be that necessary to sew that straight across there, but once we open the binding up, this is going to actually be the fold that you fold over to the front of the binding. And if you don't sew it straight, you'll end up with a little bit of a jog over like this on the binding. So now you see why I like to use a ruler, because for me, it's all about accuracy. Now telling you to sew this and, and it being easy are two different things. What you want to do is get this the, the quilt itself I like to pinch it and put a clip on it to keep it from getting in the way so I can pull the binding away from the quilt itself. Now the objective is to get your needle right on that line. Lower the needle and stitch along that, that line with a reduced stitch length 
about 1.8 or 15 stitches per inch. And now I'm moving the guide over so that the white part of the guide lines up with the line. Then I don't have to keep my eye looking at the needle. Instead, I can watch right here. Now you have an accurate seam allowance right along the edge of that. And we're gonna cut one quarter of an inch away from that actual stitching line. But before we ever cut, we go ahead and pull the bindings together, kind of pull in opposite directions, and it should lay flat, but that's not enough checking. We also wanna make sure that this is gonna be laying flat on the quilt. So remove the clip, spread your quilt out as well, and your binding should lay perfectly flat on your quilt. Go ahead now and open this up. So now you know you're safe to cut that quarter inch distance away from that stitching line. And then open up the seam to reduce bulk and press. Now all the handling that we did on the two ends causes a messy looking appearance right there. To make it look better, we can go ahead and use spray starch and press. And then it tightens it all back up again, perfectly flat and ready for you to stitch it together. Now you simply start past where you began. So you can see here's where I initially stopped sewing the binding on to allow for the area where we're joining it. So I'm past that area and then we just go ahead and sew over it. And then you're gonna come back to where you ended the other side. And go beyond that and that is very secure now you take your corner and you just kind of push in the top of the quilt right in like that and there you see your mitered corner go ahead and repeat that on all four sides of the quilt now that we're done with that we want to really stay away from the corners with the iron as you press you have the risk of the, the back of the binding getting puffy. So it is really better to not iron with the quilt facing up, but to actually iron with it facing down. And the direction the binding seam allowance is facing is the direction we wanna press the binding toward. And as you do that, I find it best to use a wooden presser rather than an iron and you pull down toward the binding at a 30 degree angle. So you're sliding across, not really stretching the, the binding out of shape. It's really, really wonderful. And you can see it's a very tight press so that you can really see where the seam allowance is. And, and that is what we're going for. You don't want it to be baggy or to get folded over like that. So that happens sometimes with an iron. We can think we've ironed it flat, but actually the fabric was just creased along the edge. And you might get tempted to put your fingers really close as you bring your iron down, but that is bad or dangerous for you, so better to use a presser. And our pressers are actually designed for the iron. It's okay for it to touch it. And then shot of steam doesn't burn you because your fingers are not up against the iron. Then there's no harm in adding some spray starch and ironing with the iron and giving it even a shot of steam. See how, see how flat that binding is laying now? Now you wanna repeat that on all four sides and you wanna make sure also that your binding has a really nice crisp fold on it as well. Instead of bringing the binding around and, and hand sewing, you simply take out the corner and then you're going to go ahead and take your quilt and kind of fold it in half. And there exposes the actual fold that is the miter of the binding on the back of the quilt. Then you take and press to get a really good tight press on this. 
corner and make sure the two edges of the bindings are lined up with each other and press there as well. Now you have a real tight hold there and you go ahead and spin the fabric around, place it underneath the foot. This foot helps us guide exactly a quarter inch away from the point because you just bring the point up to the guide. If you don't have this foot, you can put some washi tape on your machine to know what is exactly a quarter inch away from your needle. And then sew forward and back. Using about a 1.8 stitch length. Okay, now after you sew it, you'll see that this little seam allowance that we created is also a little loop and you can put a turning tool in there real easy. But first we flip the binding over and then take your tool and go through that little loop and push out to create a perfect mitered corner. All done by machine, no hand sewing required. Now you're gonna repeat that on all four sides. The next step is to draw a line of the basting glue along the edge inside the seam allowance and then slide your finger across it to distribute it e evenly. And then you lay your quilt binding down so that it's lined up with that stitching line. So you should just barely be able to see the stitching line right along the edge of the binding when you're finished. And as you're progressing across the quilt, using clips, to hold it in place is good. Should you glue in the wrong spot, you can always steam it with a steam iron and it will give you the ability to reposition it again. This is when you definitely wanna take your time because if you position the binding perfectly, then stitching will be perfect. Go ahead and continue all the way along your stitching line. To assist in the corners, go ahead and place a clip or a pin across here to help you to form that corner so that it lines up with the seam allowance. Or you can position two clips on either side of the corner as well. Once you have your binding glued, go ahead and apply some more spray starch and press. This is your chance to get a really nice crisp edge on there and go ahead and hit it with steam. Using an iron will also speed up the drying time of the glue. So I can see that my corner is not absolutely perfect. And this is your chance to manipulate it and get it so that it's right lined up with that stitching line. And once you have it in that position, then apply the clip and go ahead and apply your glue. And press it. And continue on all four sides. At this point, you could probably convince somebody that you've hand sewn that already onto the top of your quilt. Isn't that lovely? So now you know it cannot move on you at all while we proceed now to hand sew by machine. So we're going to use invisible thread, and I prefer 100% nylon. If you have been told it melts, so you can see the thread crossing over the ruler, so you know that there is thread there. And now I'm going to press. I have it on cotton setting, see, and I'm going to burst it with steam. Uh, I'm doing this in real time so that you know that I'm not cheating. This is cotton setting, burning it with steam that would burn your fingers. And there's the thread, perfectly intact, still as strong as it ever was. So now you know you don't have to worry about melting your nylon thread. And put nylon thread on your bobbin. Wind your bobbin slower than you normally would. Half speed is adequate. If you cannot wind your bobbin slower, 
then don't wind it full. It's so thin. See how thin that is? That you could hold 100 times the cotton thread you could put on a bobbin. So you really don't need a whole bobbin in order to bind your quilt with it because nylon thread does actually stretch. It has a very important quality to it. It has memory. It stretches out and comes back and stretches out and comes back. Do you know anything else that acts like that? Your fabric. Your fabric stretches out and comes back. That's called memory. And that is why nylon thread used to be called memory yarn and used for pantyhose. If you have difficulty seeing the eye of the needle to thread it, you can take something white and position it behind your needle. And you can mark on the invisible thread to give it color. That helps you see it better against the white as well. If this does not work for you, remember you can always take the needle off of the machine and thread it in your hand. Use your standard zigzag stitch and a stitch width of one, which is almost zero, just a little bit more. And then we're going to go to our stitch length and we're going to increase that to about 3.0 millimeters or about eight stitches per inch. If you do not have the satin edge foot by Creative Feet, you will want to watch and make sure one swing goes on the binding and one swing goes off the binding all the way around. With a satin edge foot, we turn the hand wheel until we know that our needle is in the left swing and then turn the silver nut on the foot, moving the wire inside the zigzag opening over until it touches the left side of the needle. Once it's in position, we can rely on that wire to not allow us to go too far in the opposite direction. To use this foot for the binding application, you'll just push toward the foot and underneath the guide, it will prevent you from going too far. And then you just go ahead and sew. One swing on, one swing off, and we're whip stitching by machine. When you reach the corner, you're going to lower the needle so that it's in the left swing and in the ditch. Then you lift the presser foot, spin your quilt around. You can see the foot is tipping to the back because of the material being so thick. You can take some material and place it behind the presser foot for a few stitches. And that leveled off the foot and only needed it for just one stitch. And then you just go ahead and continue to the next side. The difference between using this foot and another foot is that I'm really not doing the guiding. I'm relying on the foot by pushing toward it and it steers basically for me so that I'm sure to get one swing on, one swing off, one swing on, one swing off. It's very relaxing. Now I'm coming back to the end. And you can go ahead and leave a long length of thread and pull it through or use a knot stitch on your machine. But simply selecting a straight stitch and doing a few stitches will also lock that stitch. Well, there's no reason to avoid binding when it ends up looking this beautiful all by machine. Should you get any glue on your quilt, and it doesn't just peel right off like that. You can just use a damp washcloth and just wipe off the surface and there'll be no glue left. And once this is laundered, all of the glue that you use to secure the binding will simply wash away in the wash with no risk to the plumbing in your house because it's a very, very thin water soluble stabilizer. If you don't wanna to have to refer to the video every time you do a quilt binding, I recommend you make several items and do the entire process over and over and over again. If you do that like five to seven times, the next time you make a quilt, you won't even have to think about it. I hope this helps you to feel more confident about quilting, knowing that 
the final step might actually be really fun instead of challenging and stressful. You don't have to sit there and hand sew anymore. Not that I'm criticizing hand sewing for those of you who enjoy the art. Fool everyone into thinking you did it by hand. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. And if you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you will today. Happy quilting!